General Grievous is one of the most straightforward characters in Star Wars. He hates the Jedi and wants to see them dead. But why is this? There are a few reasons. Prior to Grievous becoming a cyborg, he was a member of the Kalish species who resided on the planet Kali. He had a normal life with his friends and family, however, the Huck War changed everything. The planet Yemi has become overpopulated and began to invade neighboring settlements, including Kali, where they attempted to find refuge for their people. When they refused to leave, the Kali people began killing them. The Jedi Council intervened and placed sanctions upon the Kalish people, resulting in starvation and millions of deaths. The Jedi Council were wrong in this instance, and Grievous hated them ever since. But let's say in this story that the Jedi Council sided with Grievous' people and helped protect their world. This would mean that they respect the Jedi a great deal more. A few years later, Sidious and Dooku needed a being to undertake the role of being the leader of the droid army. Dooku recalled back to the Kali War and the ferocious being Grievous, who fought for his people. Dooku organizes for Grievous' ship to crash and for the Kali to suffer immense injuries. The Sith Lord needed Grievous to get injured so that he could rebuild him into the demonic, terrifying being he is to instill fear across the galaxy. When Grievous was reborn as a cyborg, Dooku told the mortally wounded Grievous that the Jedi were to be blamed for his crash and the current fighting on his home world. In the original timeline, this would have been enough for Grievous to be set in his ways about hating the Jedi, but in this story, the droid holds more respect for the Jedi and knows in his heart that they didn't do this. Grievous would secretly align himself with Dooku in this moment, knowing that if he didn't, he would be killed, but his plan is to reach out to the Jedi Council and help them. The Clone Wars begin and the galaxy is thrusted into war. Grievous is given his lightsabers and he trains with Dooku on how to wield them. Grievous still has to present himself as a formidable adversary, knowing that if he didn't, Dooku would have him replaced. However, early on in the war, plans for a ship with a weapon that can disable any ship in its beam, known as the Malevolence, begins construction. Grievous is completely stuck in this situation. He has no desire to use this weapon to harm the Jedi. He felt like he had a duty to his people to help protect the Jedi, like they did for him. Because of this, Grievous decides to contact the Jedi Council and inform them of this weapon. Through a secure comlink server that Dooku can't trace, Grievous gets in contact with the Jedi Council and although they were skeptical, they could sense his true intentions. They were very confused. At this point in the war, Grievous has only begun to make a name for himself and he already had the reputation of being horrifying. The Council tell Grievous that they will only listen to him if he comes in person. Essentially, this was the council's way of seeing if the information he had to share was worth hearing because he would have to take a great risk going to Coruscant. The council would send a ship to his position that wouldn't be traced by the separatists or the Republic. This allowed him to sneak onto Coruscant undetected without anyone seeing him. Grievous, with his large and intimidating frame, would step through the doors of the council chambers and stand in the center of the arena, 12 Jedi Masters staring at him. Yoda would begin and ask Grievous why he was here. Coming to Coruscant was a risky decision and he knows at any point he could be arrested and executed. Grievous would explain to the council that he doesn't believe in the Separatist cause and knows that Dooku is trying to turn him against the Jedi. In the original timeline, Grievous had a lot of demons to draw upon, specifically how his entire civilization was starved to death and how he lost his entire family, the moment that changed him forever. But now that the Jedi saved his people years earlier, his mindset was not nearly as vulgar. He tells the council the story of their people, to which they all nod in agreement, remembering the mission. It was Plo Koon and his apprentice that were sent to help his people. Grievous offered his thanks directly to Master Plo. The entire council could send that Grievous' words were true, he wasn't trying to deceive them. Grievous wasn't force sensitive, and therefore he was unable to mask his feelings making his intentions easy to sense for the Jedi. The Jedi asked for the information to which Grievous explains the malevolence. He explains what the weapon is and how dangerous it is, but there is only one way to destroy it. Windu explains to Grievous that they will place their trust in him and have the cyborg act as a spy for the Republic. Grievous bows, but he explains to the council that he will still have to command the ship with the intention of dealing damage, but the council ensures him that their troopers will destroy the battleship before he has to take any lives. 
Before they leave, a private communication route is set up that can't be traced back to either of them so that Grievous can keep his cover. The relationship between the Jedi and Grievous has begun. Yoda sends Plo Koon, Anakin and Ahsoka to deal with the malevolence the following week and they are able to follow Grievous' instructions and destroy the vessel, saving thousands of lives. This allowed the council to gain trust with Grievous and their true alliance began. Over the course of the following months, this continued. Grievous would inform them of small things that are happening and tell them where Dooku would be heading in hopes that the Jedi Knights could defeat him. With Grievous on their side, they began winning more battles, learning about upcoming operations of the Separatists and even where several secret droid facilities are. However, the Jedi Council quickly realized that they couldn't be sent to know everything as it would raise suspicions of a traitor amongst the Separatist ranks. As time went on, the allegiance between the Jedi and Grievous only grew stronger. For the first time since the original Council meeting, Grievous returned to Coruscant where he came with dire news. They had agreed to maintain contact through hologram communications as it was too risky to have Grievous coming in and out of Coruscant without somebody finding out. When Windu demands to know why he has come to them, Grievous explains that the Separatists are planning an invasion of Kamino to destroy the cloning facilities. This alarmed everyone in the room and they knew that they had to act immediately. They raised their fleet and sent Jedi Masters Kip Fisto, Kiari Mundi and Anakin Skywalker to Kamino. When the Separatists invaded, they were well enough prepared, but the Separatist forces were still able to launch attacks onto the surface and cause devastation across the facilities. The clones fought for the lives of their brothers and for the safety of the Republic. After hours of extreme fighting, Dooku realized that they weren't making any progress and Grievous called an evacuation of their troops. As they began their retreat, Fisto engaged in a duel with the Sarge Ventress where the Jedi Master was able to eliminate her. Due to Grievous' secret information, they were able to thwart the incoming Separatists. Two years had passed since the beginning of the war and the relationship between Jedi and the General was strong. Despite Grievous' secret information, an end to the war was not in sight. The Council decided to change their approach with their spy and instead work to make him look extremely successful in the eyes of the Separatists. Because of this, they allowed battles that Grievous was in command of to win, leading him to become feared and revered in the Separatist army. Everyone knew that he was a strong and powerful leader. Large campaigns such as Ryloth were won by Grievous. Since the beginning of their alliance, the Council had been asking Grievous to find Darth Sidious and figure out his true identity. But the cyborg would explain to the Jedi that he rarely meets with him and only spends his time with Dooku. They would have to work hard if Grievous would gain an audience with Sidious. He continued his task as a Republic spy and told the Council everything he was hearing. They were now in the third year of the Clone Wars. Sidious tells Dooku he believes that there is a traitor in their ranks and that it could be Grievous, as he knows most of the operations that are commenced. In order to test this theory, Dooku tells Grievous about a false invasion to the planet Christophysis where millions of droids will be stationed. Obviously, Grievous passes this information over to the Republic, who then set up a blockade around the planet. This proved it for the Sith Lords, as only Grievous was told about Christophysis. Sidious was absolutely furious and knew that he had to punish Grievous. He tells the droid to meet with him, that he has special training with the droid leader. Grievous tells the Council this and they know that this was their opportunity to defeat the Sith Lord. Grievous sends them the location, an abandoned temple on the planet Naboo, and Windu, Skywalker, Plo Koon, and Kenobi are sent to follow. The Council wanted no clones on the mission, but Anakin sensed that something was wrong. He tells Rex and some of the 501st to follow, placing a tracker beacon on himself. When Grievous arrives on Naboo and speaks to the Sith Lord, Sidious blasts the cyborg with lightning, cackling as he does it. Sidious tells the cyborg how he knows he has betrayed the Separatists. Grievous was screaming in pain at the lightning, which was terrible for his cybernetics. When the Jedi arrive, they see Grievous on the floor with sapphire sparks radiating off him. They attempt to intervene and help their spy, but Sidious senses them arrive. He laughs as they approach. The Jedi had underestimated Palpatine. With his, with his lightsaber, the Sith Lord asks Grievous if he has any last words before decapitating him. As this happens, an army of droids emerges from all sides and surrounds the Jedi, alongside Dooku who reveals himself. The Sith Lords tell the Jedi that they knew of their little alliance all along. 
the droids are instructed to take their weapons and place them all in force handcuffs as they are taken to their cell. As they are taken to their cell, Anakin hits his tracking beacon which indicates the Rex to come and rescue them. When the droids begin to lock their cell, the 501st arrive and blast the droids down in an intense standoff. When the final droid drops, Commander Oppo gives the Jedi their lightsabers back and they quickly hurry off to find the Sith. They know that this is their best opportunity and they may never have a chance to defeat their enemy again. Going to the landing platform, they see them marching to enter their shuttle. The 501st raise their blasters and begin to shoot at the ramp, causing the Sith to become distracted and to turn. They ignite their crimson lightsabers, there was no way out of the situation, other than fighting. The Force uses all run at each other, Windu and Kenobi fight Sidious, while Skywalker and Plo Koon duel Dooku. Dooku swings with elegance and precision. He was considered the best duelist in the Jedi Order, and his talents were now paying dividends. But Plo Koon is the only Jedi in the Order to be rumored to defeat Yoda in combat, and his strength coupled with the Chosen One's unique abilities created a formidable alliance. Around this duel, droids arrived and began to fire at the clones, who under Rex's leadership began to mount a defense. Sidious swung with no care in the world, he desired to see these Jedi dead. Windu was able to defend himself and apply attacks with his own, but it was Obi-Wan who was placed on his back foot. He was no match for the Sith Lord's strengths, and very early on, Sidious's crimson blade entered his chest and killed him. Anakin senses the death of his master and his determination increases. He draws on his emotions to gain the upper hand on Dooku. His master was dead, and now he needed revenge. Skywalker and Plo Koon synchronize their attacks and together they are able to kill Count Dooku. Sidious was the only one left and when Anakin and Plo joined the fray, there wasn't much he could do. He attempted to blast lightning at the Jedi, but Plo intervened and fired back with his own force judgement, allowing Windu to sneak from the side and slice down Lord Sidious, killing him. Windu was pleased, but Anakin dropped to his knees next to Obi-Wan's body. They had won, but at what cost? Plo bent down next to Sidious' corpse and removed his hood, revealing the face of Chancellor Palpatine. They were shocked and now realized how blind the Jedi were to the rising darkness. The Jedi go back to Coruscant and inform the Senate of the Sith Lord's deaths, but also reluctantly explain that it was Chancellor Palpatine who was the Sith Lord, providing the evidence to support this claim. The people of the Republic were shocked, but no one could dispute the evidence. Although it wasn't illegal to be a Sith Lord, all of Palpatine's affiliations and dealings in creating the Separatist movements and orchestrating the war were revealed. The Senate and Jedi now realized how much of an error they had made in trusting him. Without Sidious, Dooku or Grievous, the Separatist forces fell with ease and the Republic won the Clone Wars. The Jedi clear Grievous' name in front of the Senate, explaining that he was a secret spy for them the whole time and that they couldn't have won the war without him. They mourned his death and thanked him for his service towards the Republic. To commemorate his sacrifice, a statue of Grievous was built on Coruscant so that no one would ever forget him. Bail Organa would be elected as Chancellor, where he would begin the lengthy task of rebuilding the war torn systems after the conflict's conclusion. The Jedi Order removed themselves from politics, realizing the dangers it can cause. Instead, they focused on following the will of the Force again. The Jedi were removed as generals of the army and they reverted back to their most effective roles of being peacekeepers in the galaxy. If you enjoyed today's video, you must watch what if General Grievous killed Obi-Wan and what if Mace Windu went to Mustafar with Obi-Wan. A special shout out to Mimic Lord for commenting on this video idea for the last 66 days consecutively. It was a lot of fun to make. I hope you all enjoyed and may the force be with you.